Welcome back. We're on turn two of Skies Above the Reich. We are on mission one of 1942 and turn two. So um, we start back at the top of the sequence. We're going to do a move. And so my planes are going to move to attack. So we're going to go in for our attack right now. Um, again, there's no return. Um, return only happens if you have planes in the return boxes. Uh, there's no escorts yet, because the escorts don't arrive until turn five. Um, recovery, there's nobody uh, that's been hit. Blast and flak, I explained, we don't do. And then cohesion, we do another cohesion check. I rolled an eight, so nothing happens. Um, okay, so now we're on an attack. So when you get to the attack phase, it helps to have this sheet. It is a good reminder of things. Um, this is very nice to follow, but once you get to these sections, there's like sub bullets that aren't listed here, and that's why you need this. So as you can see here, you're shifting fighters from the approach boxes. It does have some really nice text explaining to you what you're supposed to do. So um, basically, we're picking where we're going to attack. So I take my four. So a couple of rules with this. You can put as many fighters as you want in these approach boxes. And when I say approach boxes, I mean any of the approach boxes from any of the directions. You can have a stack of 30 here if you wanted. But for the attack step, you only get to pick a wave of six. So I only have four total bombers, so I don't need to worry about the wave limit. But in the later missions, when you have like 12, 14 bombers out on this map, it's a very big deal. And so um, you can only do six at a time. And so uh, I'm doing all four of mine. And, and when the, in the approach step, you basically pick where you're going to attack. So for example, I'm gonna put two guys there to attack him. And should I do all four? This is the part I struggle with. Um, I'm not gonna do all four. I'll do two guys up here to attack that one. Now, why not attack this guy, you wonder? And that's because this is a two. I'm not a big fan of the two, but you know what? Since he's already injured, we're gonna do it. We'll go after the two. Okay, it might've been a dumb move. Let's find out. Are they out of the sun? The answer is no because the sun is over here on the flank and it's in the high zone, high altitude. So no sun. The other thing is, is if I had altitude, I would put these underneath my fighters to show that he's level. And then this would show that he's high altitude. So you don't forget what your altitude is out there. But they're all low altitude, so no blue markers. And there's only four fighters, so it's pretty easy to remember. Select each fighter's mode. Okay, so you have two choices. You can choose to be evasive or direct. Okay, the benefits and cons of them vary, but, but basically evasive means your pi pilots are trying to avoid being hit. So they're gonna be more cautious. So there's, so obviously the, the pro to that is you're probably going to take less hits, so you'll survive. A more, you're more capable of surviving, right? Um, that's the good news. The bad news, and there's two pieces of bad news that go with it, is <clears throat> so we're going to draw these collision markers. Uh, collision markers occur anytime you have two fighters in the same space. Remember, a space is different than an element, which is different than a box. The collision markers stay on the board and count towards the cohesion check if and only if you're in direct mode. Um, determined mode is, uh, sorry, I'm using the word direct and you're gonna see me interchange those two terms a lot. But it's determined mode according to the rules. So determined fighters obviously are, they're going in for the kill and, and they, they're being determined to hit. So there's theoretically more chances for a hit if they're in determined mode. Determined mode fighters, when you draw collision checks, 
those collision markers stay out here and count towards the cohesion check, which is actually very beneficial. So it's something to keep in mind. Now, the other drawback to um, being evasive is when you return. When you return, you're going to go here if you're determined, or you're going to go here if you were evasive. So evasive fighters take longer to regroup to position themselves for another attack. Whereas if you're determined, you can get back into position for another attack quicker. That's in, so determined is very useful if you don't have a lot of turns left. Like in our case, we actually only have five turns until the escorts arrive. Now, here's the thing that would make you think, okay, well, let's go determined because we want to get in as many attacks as we can. I'm telling you, we're basically only going to get one more attack in before those escorts arrive, whether we do determined or not. So I'm actually going to go evasive. Now, another reason to go determined is if you only have six turns in the mission, but look, we got 11 turns. So we have a lot of turns to do our damage. So I'm going to go evasive. And I know that means I'm not going to get these uh, collision tokens, but evasive is very helpful for for resolving these collision tokens. Um, collision tokens can be pretty nasty. Uh, okay, so we did our mode, and now we're doing collision checks. Like I said, we're gonna do two. A collision check occurs everywhere. There's more than one fighter. So you pick one fighter, and that's the one that's gonna do the collision check. So I always just, for lack of originality, I'm gonna pick the top one. So you're gonna draw from this cup. And you don't use the red card. That, the red side is for when you get hit. So right there is what we want to see. Proximity, no impact. Now, if we were in determined mode, that would have been awesome because I could have just put this here and that counted. That would count towards the markers. But because we're in evasive, I throw it back in the cup. And now we're going to just use the top one there. I'm drawing another one. Flip it over. Proximity, two. Okay, so this means... I'm going to roll a die. I need to get greater than a 2, and I'm fine. All right, so I rolled an 8. Nothing happens. Again, if I was in determined mode, this would have been yet another marker that was staying on the board. But because I'm evasive, it goes back in the cup. But I think I still made the right choice. We'll find out. All right, so we resolved the collision. Nothing bad happened. Select our maneuvers. It's gonna seem complicated when you read the rule books, but it's so dang simple. So you basically have two choices. Are you diving or are you climbing? Okay, that's your first choice. Are you going straight or are you turning or rolling is your second choice. So you're doing a combination of them. So, uh, so for example, we're coming in from the tail so after we finish our attack on this, which direction are we gonna go? So if I put a climb on this guy, what I'm saying is he's low altitude now, but after he finishes his attack, he's gonna climb up to high altitude towards the nose, the front of the, of the group. So he will return on the nose in the high altitude section. If I would've picked dive, or I'm sorry, let me grab the other one. If I had to pick dive, he would have done the same thing, except now he's going to return in the low altitude of the nose section. Okay, so dive and climb are both straight through. So if I'm coming in from the flank, I would go straight through to the other flank. So when you pick these, you're just going straight through whatever direction you're approaching from. And then this is just the same thing, but I'm turning. So now I can say, I can say that this fighter. They're coming into the tail, but we're gonna climb that way. So I'll end up on that flank over there, or I can climb this way and end up on this flank over here, which is not a bad idea because the sun is there. And we get a bonus if we're attacking from the high altitude of the sun. So what I'm gonna do is both of these guys are gonna go high and roll this way towards that flank. Now my other ones, I'm going to go dive and straight through. So they're gonna to go to the nose. 
and those two are going to go to the flank. Okay, and I'll explain some of my strategy behind this later, but obviously this one I think makes sense to most of you. I'm, I'm trying to take advantage of the sun. The other one is going to go to the nose, so I'm flanking these planes from multiple directions, and that's going to become very apparent in our very next step. So check for advantage. So let's go over the advantage tokens. This one, Schwarm. It, the element has to have four fighters, and they can't be oblique, so they have to be from the nose or the tail. So Schwarm is going to go on the board. And what Schwarm lets us do is we get to create two hits. Even if we draw zero hits, we get to add two. Or you can add one at a time. Flip it over for one and then remove it for the other. Schwarm is very, very good. So by me rolling to the oblique here, I'm actually not going to get the Schwarm advantage next time. Because you need four fighters, and I only have four in the, in the mission. So I'm taking a risk. Um, but I'm sort of convinced that not all four fighters are going to be there. Some of them are going to get damaged, and so I'm not going to have all four for the next round anyway. So that's my risk I'm taking. This one is a space with two fighters. So however you pronounce that, that's what you get. And what that does is that lets you cancel a hit. Very nice. Now, um, <clears throat> these bonuses are one per element. Now remember I told you that this is just one element on this map. So even though I have two fighters in two different spaces, I don't get to put both of these out because it's one per element. And then uh, this last one is an element attack from more than one altitude and position. Everybody's low and everybody's coming from the tail. So the altitude and position are exactly the same. What I'm setting up is these are going to be high, these are going to be low, these are going to be oblique, and that's going to be at the nose. I'm setting up to get this the next time. And the next time, it is just a cancel hit. Um, but it's still nice to get as many of those as you can. Okay, um, so we have our advantages out there. Um, you use them at any time. And I know some of you might be thinking, geez Louise, when are we actually going to get to fight? Well, that is happening right now. <laughs> so um, <clears throat> you get to pick in any order. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick these planes in the back. They're going to attack this bomber first, and I will start with the guy on the front, on the top. Remember, he's evasive. This is the Grim character. And also remember, they all have the luck ability. And so how do you resolve the attack? Well, first thing you do is you look at the lethal level, which I keep calling threat level. That's this. So it's a one. See that there? So the lethal level is a one. And, um, and so what we do is we go over to these cards and you draw from the tail. So I'm gonna actually draw four cards. I'm not drawing them all right now, but I'm just gonna bring them over here. Okay, so we're gonna start with the first card. This is for Grim, that pilot on the top. And then you get this. First thing you do is you're looking at these numbers on the top are your threat level or lethal level. Remember how I said it was a one? So we're on a one. We're at low altitude, so we go down to the bottom. If we were determined, that symbol there means that you took a hit. This symbol means you did a hit. And then this symbol here means we did a hit. So we are evasive. So determined is brown, evasive is blue. So by going evasive, I avoided getting hit and then I still did a hit to him. So this is actually a very good card. They're not always this good. All right, so I hit that bomber. So now I'm gonna draw from the damage cup. And I drew this. So first thing you do is you roll. I rolled a seven. It was a seven, you saw my finger, it bumped it. Just because I'm solo, I'm not cheating, at least not for the video. <laughs> Um, okay, so by rolling a 7, this happens. So it doesn't matter how much damage this was, which was a 0, ironically. Um, the bomber's damage goes back in the cup. All of it. And what happened is, is this bomber is 
following. All right, so that's good news. That's our victory point. That's what we're trying to do for this game. So we just scored one victory point. Um, but I'll do victory points at the end. Uh, this, though, we need to do right away. Grim just scored an experience point. So he gets one experience point for a fallen bomber. Two if he would have destroyed it. So we now have one for Grim. Okay, uh, the other thing this could do, there's various symbols on here. We'll go over them as we encounter them, but that's it. So Grim actually stays here. It's possible that Grim could have moved through. Um, but since they're chasing them, it, that doesn't happen. Usually if you're coming from the nose, you end up passing through. Uh, so um, physics, you gotta love it. Okay, the bomber is destroyed, or not destroyed, but fallen, meaning it's out of the group. So that means this next guy has nobody to attack. However, he still has to resolve his attack. He just can't hit anybody. There's nothing for him to hit. But it's possible that these other bombers can still hit him. Now, the lethal level, this little minus one here means that the lethal level for all directions just got reduced by one. So the lethal level here is a zero. The lethal level here is a one. I'm just moving my counters around here. This lethal level dropped to a one, so these two are now at a lower lethal level, which is why I picked these to go first. And so he is now in a zero, because that's a zero now. Okay, so we're gonna draw a card for him. And now we don't look at the one, we look at the zero. He's coming in low and evasive, and he would have hit, which is, these are awesome cards that we'll never see again for the rest of the game. Um, Okay, so, uh, but there's no hit to apply. So we're done there. And both of these guys are going to just sit tight right where they're at. Next we go to these two. And remember, I still have my two advantages and I'm definitely gonna use this with this next one. So, um, so the next guy is Dull. And Dull is going to all. Remember, he's a threat level one now. Low altitude, he did one hit. So we're going to draw our hit. It is another engine hit. Oh, and once again, boy, we didn't even have to use our swarm. I normally don't get this lucky. Okay, another bomber has fallen. And so Dahl gets a victory point. So now I gotta get it out over here. One victory point for Dell. Or not victory point, I apologize. That's experience points, experience points. Okay, so um, I still have to draw for the last guy. It's now a zero. Um, he would take a hit, but we have this ability here that cancels a hit and we're gonna use it. And of course, I never got to use this ability, which, um, well, it stinks, but uh, uh, taking them out is exactly what we wanted to do. Okay, so now um, we do what's the next step. Well, first of all, let's put our cards away. Discard them. So now we go, so we're on breakaway step. So for the breakaway step, um, we do what's called continuing fire. That's those cards. These are never good. One. Sometimes they have an event that gives you something good, but it, they're still. All right, so we just do them in order. I'm gonna start with this guy. Um, threat level is zero. Same deal, you look at the zero. He was cautious, not determined, so cautious is the blue. But you always do the uh, events first. Roll a die. If even, place a damage marker on the nearest bomber. If odd, the fighter is hit. So, we roll a die. I rolled an even. I'm having like the best mission ever. So the nearest bomber is one, two, they're both equidistant. So I'm gonna go and hit this guy in the back. All right, oh my gosh. That one's actually a decent roll. Another engine hit. Oh no, look at that. <laughs> I 
All right. Um, we now have our third fallen bomber. And this was who? Grim. All right, Grim gets an experience point for that. It is possible that he does not, because this is debris and it wasn't done by uh, an attack. If somebody can clarify that in the comments, I would appreciate it. Um, but I give the experience point because it happened during his turn. I mean, he's the one that's going to get the hit for this. So anyways, no hits for him. He did a hit to a bomber, and so then he returns. So we remove him. So he was climbing. Uh, oh, this way. So he returns here. Sorry for the shaky phone. He returns to the flank high return box, evasive return box, and then you can flip him back over to his name. All right. So now we got this guy who's doing the exact same thing. The event says slow climb, which we are. Uh, it says if climbing or climb rolling, break away to the tail position. So what that's saying is he's not going to get to go here with his buddy. He has to go to the tail. And he, since we're doing a, a climb roll, you add plus one to his threat level. So that zero becomes a one, but it doesn't matter. He still didn't take any damage. So this one now goes to the tail, and he returns at the high level. And then this token you just put away. Now we got the next guy there who's diving. Into the sun. If climbing or climb rolling towards the position with the sun, you could have skipped this whole step. But we're not. It's a threat level of zero, so nothing happens. So this guy makes it where he needs to be. He's going low altitude to the nose. Then the last one, also diving. If dive rolling, skip continuing fire. We're not rolling. He is a zero, but he's evasive. So see the difference between determined and evasive? Sometimes determined gets you through the battle with the bombers, but then when you get to this continuing fire, look at all those hits. So, um, no hits for him. So he also returns there. And you just take your cards and throw them in a discard pile. Okay, so... Oh, I found what I was looking for. Look at this. Da -da -da -da. All right. Okay. So, um, put this over here. Okay. So all of our planes returned. That was a long turn, but that's it. Gets fun whenever you're actually attacking. We just just knocked three out of the four bombers out. Now, for those of you that are curious, the um. Advanced rules, which I have not played yet, but I at least took a sneak peek. If you're playing the advanced game, you would have gotten zero experience points for these. You still would have gotten, or I'm sorry, you've gotten zero victory points. You still would have gotten your experience points, but what, what happens is they... Those fallen bombers that dropped out of the group, they get put onto this turn track like when they fell out. And then you're gonna have like this phase, after, after you finish this map here, you're gonna to go to this thing. And then there's gonna be a pursuit. So this bomber fell out of the group, he's all by himself, and now you're gonna pursue him and try to shoot him down. You need to destroy him in order to get points. So it's just, an, it's more fun, if you will, to the game, uh, but it's also more complication. So for those of us still learning, this is a bit much to add on your first go around, so I don't recommend it, but it is definitely, it looks very cool. And as you can see, there's um, lots going on. And I was told this is a, similar to B-17, um, Queen of the Skies. I don't have that game, so I can't tell you. But uh, anyways, 
Uh, that's it. We are now moving to turn three. Okay, so we still have two turns until the escorts arrive. Turn three, we do a move phase. There's nobody to move because everybody's in the return box. So now we go to the return box. Return is simple. It just, that's it. One, one, and All right, there's nothing else to do. So we, uh, no escorts, no recovery, no blast and flak, but there is cohesion checks. There are still three markers on the board. So we're gonna roll, and we got a six, which is not enough. Okay, so, um, so that doesn't do anything. And uh, now some of you might be wondering, okay, what does the cohesion check do? The cohesion check, if you fail it, causes this loose marker to come on the board, and that impacts the whole element. So what it does is it means that they're still in formation, they're still in formation, but um, but they're loose formation. So this three is reduced by one because of this, so that becomes a two, and that makes it a one. So there's a one uh, threat level there. Well, if you have this on the board, all the numbers in the entire element get a minus one. These only affect the spaces around him, but this affects the entire element. So cohesion checks are pretty cool. So you get this, and then let's say you fail a cohesion check again, then you become kaput, and minus two gets applied everywhere. And then if it happens again, uh, one of the most damaged bombers actually get a fallen token on it, and then it goes back to loose. Um, Okay, so with that being said, we failed the cohesion, and that's already the end of turn three. So now we go to turn four. In turn four, we have no move. We go to low. This one's going to high, and that one's going to high. And we do a cohesion check, failed it. So now we go to turn five. The escorts arrive. Okay, um, the rules say that you can set this up from the very beginning of the mission. Um, I like waiting until we get to the escorts arriving to do this. So um, what you do is you grab your seven, in this case, seven Spitfires. And if you recall, we're, uh, there was a heavy and there was a light. So it was L for, for lightly escorted, five, and then S for Spitfire. That's how we know to get the Spitfires. And then the L just means that of these seven, two of them are not gonna come. So we're gonna have five of the seven escorts. Just don't look at the other side, shuffle them however you like. And they're going to go on the board according to these, this chart. So what I found Right underneath my nose was my... All right, so we got an eight. So uh, with the eight, two of them... Sorry, yeah, so with the eight... I'm having focus issues here. Two are forward, and three are below trailing. Okay. Normally these don't... So these... So basically they're flying just like we are in these boxes outside of the formation. And so they're approaching us, and these are approaching us from, from a low altitude, these are approaching from a, a forward, uh, there you go, uh, forward position. And, and what we're gonna do in later rounds is we roll dice to see, actually we do it this round too, we roll dice to see what they do. The, the above trailing guys are the most dangerous because they can just flat out, no matter what you roll, boom, they just go wherever you are. So they intercept you. And I can tell you one thing. If these intercept you, your mission's over. <laughs> because you get involved in a dogfight with them and then the bombers keep flying, right? So it's probably realistic. I mean, it's, it's really hard to shake off a, an escort and still keep up with the bombers. And so in this particular scenario, when these guys intercept you, you get involved in a dogfight with them, but then you're out of the mission. 
So the fact that we destroyed three before they arrived is really, really good. And then the fact that they're not here is really, really good because this is the only station where they can swoop in and attack you. Everywhere else, they can still possibly attack you, but as long as you avoid certain spots, you're gonna be okay. Which we are. So these low trailing guys, they can come in the flank, and the level flank, level flank, or low tail. And if you'll notice, we're high tail over there, and we're high flank over here. So even if they come in at level or low, we're still uh, away from them. And then these forward guys can show up at the nose level, and we're at nose low. So again, we're doing good. Um, we're probably gonna get another attack in this round before those escorts cause problems for us. So um, we are on the move stage, and so I'm going to move with everybody. We're going to get our attack in while the attacking's good. The escorts are currently not intercepting us. So no return, now we do escort. So the way this works is we roll for the forward station. The black will be the forward station, the red will be the other. Oops, this isn't gonna work. All right, so we have a nine for black and a red for five. So let's move this over. So this one is a nine, and so that means he moves to below trailing. It's always just the topmost guy. Only one of these is gonna do an action. The other one just sits put. So, so this one's gonna to move to here. I put him off to the side because this one still has to do his action, which is a five. He goes to tail low. So we pick him up, we put him on tail low. If we had a fighter there, they would immediately do battle. And on his next turn, if we have a fighter anywhere near him, he will move to intercept that fighter. Um, but right now he's basically flying around and nobody's there. Okay, and then this guy just, um, I like putting him at the bottom. So he's in the queue. Remember, even though I have a stack of three, only one of them does the action. But if you have planes in all three spots, then three of them are doing actions. And anybody out here also does actions. So um, <clears throat> hopefully that made some sense. Okay, so now, um, uh, blast and flak, there is no recovery, cohesion. I'm just gonna roll like I have them. A six, nothing happens. Okay, so now we do our attack. So this is just like before, except we have only one bomber left. So these two guys are coming in from the nose. This one's coming in from the oblique, and this one's coming in from the rear. However, this is high altitude. And this one's high altitude. The other two are low. Okay, so we're on bomber formation. Done. Out of, oh, um, out of the sun. Yes. So what that means is this bomber, or this fighter here, was out of the sun. So we put this little sun token on him. What this lets you do is you get to cancel a hit. So if you'll notice, I'm a big fan of canceling hits, which so far, this mission is not teaching you the wisdom of that, but um, I, I feel it's very wise. <laughs> so um, the, um, <clears throat> the fighter can cancel a hit with Out of the Sun. And um, next we check each fighter's mode. Actually, there's one thing I'm going to look up, because Out of the Sun I don't use very often. So I'll show you how handy this is. This is page 45. So it's real quick and easy. You just open up the rule book, which is an awesome rule book. Go to page 45. Out of the sun. If the fighter approach from an approach box connected to position containing the sun marker, it benefits the advantage cancel one hit is in evasive mode, if indetermined. Ah, there we go, that's what I was looking up. Okay, so yes, everything I explained is 100% true if he's in evasive mode. If he's in determined mode, you gotta do an even odd roll. On an even, it counts just like I explained. If you roll an odd, 
it does not cancel the hit. So if you go determine mode, you're, um, you're risking the fact that the sun may not help you. If you're evasive, then you're making sure that you use that sun to your advantage. So um, <clears throat> we are at the spot where we select our mode. So this particular guy is definitely going to be evasive. I don't see any reason not to. We're going to take advantage of the sun there. But I'm going to go direct with everybody else. Um, maybe a dumb choice, but let's try it. Okay, next thing we got to do is a collision check. Now, these two are fine, but that one has two markers on it, so I have to do a collision check. Oh, I didn't go evasive. That mis this may be the stupidest choice I ever made. We're gonna find out. Uh, it was a dumb choice. Okay, we got this veer. It's a veer outcome. Had I gone evasive, I could just ignore this. But the veer outcome, see it says if evasive, you were a very smart person. If determined, you were a dodo head. So we're gonna roll die. Yeah, not good, not good. Oh, this screwed me up so much. Lesson learned. Okay, um, no matter what, something bad's happening. And I'll explain it. Let's roll and figure it out. Um, oh, here, I'll let you read it. If the number rolled is less than the number of fighters in the element, which is four, remember the element is the entire thing and I have four fighters there. If it's less than four, treat as a hit. I actually want that outcome. That's the better outcome of the two. If it's equal to or higher, all fighters in the space break away to tail. And that means they don't do any attack at all. They, they veered to avoid hitting each other and they missed their target. They never had a chance to even shoot at their target. So this is bad. I want a one, two, or a three. Oh, what is that? Oh, it's a four. Oh, it says if the number rolled is less than the number of fighters. Dang it. All right, well, this stinks. I was going to get all three of these bonuses if the four fighters stayed out there. But what's happening is both of these are moving to the tail and they were low altitude. Oh, we get to pick the return box. So what I was concerned about is if we move to this return box, we're gonna get intercepted. So it says we get to pick, so I'm gonna move them to the high altitude return box. So we're away from the interceptor. Totally within the rules. We know where he is. We're avoiding him. Okay, so um, <clears throat> then we select our maneuvers. Um, this one's coming in from the side. We're going to he's gonna dive left to the nose and that one's coming from the tail and he's just going to climb Okay, so here's the part why I was sad. We're gonna check for advantage. That means we're checking these. This would have happened if we had four fighters, but not oblique. Oh, actually, one of them's oblique, so this would never have happened anyway, so we're fine there. This would have happened if we had a space with two plus fighters. And we don't anymore, they moved over there. But we do have an element attack from more than one altitude and position, so we still get this one. So we do get one cancel hit. All right, so this guy's evasive, and we're gonna go ahead and start with him. Uh, it's time for the attack. So um, you gotta pay attention to your cards. He's coming from the oblique, so I gotta draw an oblique attack card. And let's figure out his threat level, lethality level. He is, it's a two. Um, but it subtracts one because of this. So this subtracts one from this space, so that two becomes a one. So his lethality level is a one. So I'm going to turn this over. He is coming in at a one, high, but he's evasive, not determined. If he was determined, he would have taken a hit and also applied a hit. 
So he didn't do squat. So he missed. Um, now, this three and that one means that it's called pass through. So what that means is this guy goes one and then two. See that little well, one there, there's another spot. And if there was yet another space, he would have gone three. So he basically went three spaces past the plane. This is important for the uh, continuing fire step because he's gonna use that threat level there. All right, now we go to the other guy who is coming from the tail. He's determined and his threat level is a one because it subtracts two. So we got a one. He's coming in high from the tail. He does a hit. All right, so we got a fuselage. All right, so we flip it over. So he did three damage. And that's it for him. Nothing more. So the tail so far has been a very successful approach. Okay, so now we draw a continuing fire for two guys. I'm gonna do the one that flew way off into no man's land. Bounced, if continuing fire, if diving or dive rolling, he is dive rolling. If an escort marker is in a below trailing station, it attacks this fighter. Afterwards, if not exiting or dogfighting, fighter breaks away to the tail. Ooh. Okay, so we get to do a dogfight, and as long as, if not exiting or dogfighting, the fighter will actually return to the battle. That's actually really good. But the other thing is, is that uh, there was no hit. So, so here's how this plays out. Um, we do have one in the below trailing. This is the below trailing section. There's an escort here. So you're gonna get to see an aerial dogfight, or battle, not a dogfight. This is an aerial battle. So um, those two are going to fight right now. And I'm just gonna bring them closer so you can see a little better. Okay, this token doesn't matter. The sun token, I think still helps. I may have to look that up in the rules, but what you do is you reveal this. There are six Spitfires. There's also one other thing that's important to understand is that aerial combat directly from here are never higher. And so, because of altitude. And this is important because when you get to this aerial combat table, we are BF 109s. And the first question I ask is, are you higher than the escort? They're not talking about Colorado legalization here. So the answer is yes. We are higher, so we use the top set of numbers. And then, are there more fighters than escort? And the answer is definitely no. There's one of us, and there's six of them. <laughs> so we are definitely way outnumbered. And then we're fighting against the Spitfire, so we're gonna use this set of results, the lower, the second row here. And so now we're gonna roll. Roll to six. So that's this middle column. We go down to here and it's a B. What does B mean? We go down to B and it's a break off. Fighters and one escort marker exit. That was the worst possible one. So the event said that if they don't exit, he gets the return, but this one exits. So Mr. Grimm is out of the mission. So we're just gonna park him here. He's safe, nobody hurt him. Now the, the the escort is also out of the mission, so we can remove him from the mission, but uh, we wanted our fighter. So now we are, it's impossible for us to get swarm because you need four fighters to do that. And we no longer have four in the mission. Okay, next we go to this guy. Hard roll. Uh, he's climbing, so we ignore that. He is determined, and he's a threat level one, so he takes one hit. So um, we happen to have a cancel hit thing, so that's good. And then this guy is going to show up on the return box. Not the evasive return, 
since he was determined, he's going to show up one step closer. And this comes off the board, and I think we're ready for the next round. So we'll do a little bit of cleanup here, and then the sun token goes away. Um, when I close this video out, I'm going to look up whether that sun token would have helped during an aerial battle. I don't know if it does. Um, I'm pretty sure it would, because why not? But let's, um, we'll figure it out. Okay, so now we move to turn six. So we do the move step. There is nobody to move. So then we do return. So this fighter returns. These two fighters return. And that's done. Next we do is escort. So a couple of rules here. The first one, we start with this guy. We're going to roll. I rolled a six. He goes to nose level. So he's there. He's close, but not quite. Next we go to these below trailing guys. I rolled a two. So this guy just moves to the forward station. That's all he does. Then this one here, he's looking for an enemy one space away from him, and he sees none. So then what he does is he returns to blow trailing. That's how that rule works. This guy is going to do the same thing, because we're going to next turn move out here, and then he's going to see nobody. So we're going to evade him. We're going to go in and do our attack before he gets to us. So um, that's escort, no recovery, cohesion. We have one, two, three, four markers out there now. Oh, I rolled a two. So that's good. Now we have a loose element. So now um, this threat level is zero and zero. In fact, it's zero everywhere around him. There is no threat coming at him anymore. Um, so he's loose. And then what's even funnier is this loose counts as a marker towards the next one. So, so he's damaged and he's got smoke coming out of him and he's having a hard time. Uh, maybe their guns are jammed, but uh, basically he's uh, becoming a, a juicier target by the minute. Okay, let's move on to turn seven. We are on move. This is real simple. We're gonna move and move. And then we go to return escort, okay? And roll for escort. Got a six. This one goes to the nose. This one's gonna return. I put that on the nose, I put this one, it's gonna return. And then we're gonna a nine. He goes to above trailing. Now I know I did that real quick, but there was one here and he had nowhere to go, so that's the one that returned. Okay, so recovery, blast and flak. Cohesion check again. Whoops. Okay, definitely did not fail that check. And so now we go to attack. So um, I always have to remind myself, okay, we're gonna pick our boxes. So this guy's coming in high from the nose and these two are coming in high from the tail, just like so. Um, out of the sun, no. What's our mode? We're going to make these two uh, evasive. And... Uh, I'll make the nose determined. We're going to find out how... Okay. So now we do a collision check. There's two guys together there, so we got to do a collision check. No impact. So, since they went evasive, they the token doesn't stay. Um, the the thing I was really contemplating was that token would have gotten to stay. Like I explained earlier, um, this is starting to become real. The cohesion check might be how we win this mission. Um, okay, next, select the maneuvers. Um, they're both going to just go straight through. Uh, no. 
this one is going to roll climb that way. This one's going to climb straight through. And no, this one's going to climb straight through. And this one's going to dive. OK, why am I worrying about this? Well, one, I want to take advantage of the sun. So this guy's going to go to the sun. This one's going to dive because level seems to be a popular spot. It seems to not matter which end of this I go to. So I'm going to go to the dive. Why? Because on this one, low is a very popular spot for these fighters here. We just never rolled it yet. So you want to come in high at the tail. It's harder for them to find you if you're in the high spot. So anyways, that's it. I, uh, we attack. Okay, so I'm going to do two from the tail that are evasive, and then one from the nose, and they're all at threat level zero. Okay, so here's the one from the nose. He is not evasive. Threat level zero, he's coming in high. Oh no. Okay, so we have a C, a three, and a, and a target. Okay, so uh, lots of things here. First of all, the target's simple. That means we hit him, so that part's easy. The three means we're gonna go one, two, three, although there's only two spaces. But he's gonna go three spaces through the, through the, through the map, okay? Um, but the C is what I'm worried about. The C is a collision check. That is a collision check with the uh, the bomber. So not good, not good, not good. Okay. So I just drew this. Oh, I got so lucky. No effect. No effect. Oh, that no effect stays out. Counts as a marker. Okay, so now we um, we also do a damage to him, and the damage is this. So I'm gonna go ahead and roll. Oh my gosh! Look at what I just rolled. I rolled a ten. So all that hard work and. Everybody's gone. Okay, um, that's it. Mission's over. All the bombers are falling out of the group. Everybody's heading home. So, uh, with that, uh, who was it that did that? It was, however you pronounce that, Adamite. Adamite. Get some experience points. Okay, so the mission's over. Uh, you don't need to bother uh, finishing. There's no bombers to attack you anymore. So there's nothing to shoot you. Um, the um, fighters turn around and go home. And so we had a very successful, we downed all four. All four of our planes are fallen, so we get one, two, three, four. This is staff experience. And then for victory points, um, if you remember, the victory points are on the back of your, um, your situation manual, and it's at the bottom. We're on an outbound basic game mission. It's one victory point, whether it was fallen or destroyed. So we actually get one, two, three, four victory points as well. No pilots were killed, and there's really nothing of note. We don't even have any wounded pilots. This was, this was a sweet mission. 
Um, okay, so uh, there you go. We just finished mission one of the campaign, and I will clean up and get ready for mission two and call this a video. Thanks for watching. Uh, please post in the comments if you have any questions. Um, I think the only thing that's on my mind right now, there's two things. Can I use out of the sun when that interceptor uh, intercepted me via an event? That's the first question. The second question is, uh, when there's no bombers left, I mean, do I really get to just end the campaign like I just did? I think I do, but um, uh, maybe I don't. So I can check on that as well. As always, thank you.